quiet on the set. Hello Flyers, Mike and Richie with you here once again on the Sonics 413 channel and uh, tonight we're doing vintage motor gliders and uh, you've seen this one before that's my uh, electric powered uh, Goldberg Electra what you guys have not seen yet uh, you've seen Richie before hi Rich hey dude uh, this one is the uh, Mark's Models uh, Windward is the name of it yeah and this is a motor or it actually was a, a straight glider radio controlled from uh, I believe in the mid 70s maybe maybe around 1980 possibly anyway uh, this is from my inactive fleet I I dug it out of the boneyard the other day I delivered it up to Richie and he's been getting it ready for flight and so this thing hasn't flown in about 30 years but uh, Richie has done some work to it. Let's have a look at that power installation, Rich. Okay. Now I know nobody's going to recognize that motor. You want to tell us what the heck it is? First of all, this gas tank is so cool because it's a one ounce tank that I've had for about 50 years. Yeah. It used to be in my navigator <laughs> for like 20 years. And, and then it was in my Aladdin for another 25 years. Yeah. That's an old Sullivan tank, man. Yeah. And, and that's good luck, so I'm putting it in this. It's a one ounce tank, and I love it. Good it's idea. Got lot, I've got a lot of good times with that tank. It's yeah. been up in the air a lot. Yeah, and probably run a 55 gallon drum of glow fuel to oh, it. Oh, God, yeah. So, so, what I'm looking at, though, is that strange looking <laughs> engine. Yeah, look at that, huh? That's not a Cox, is it? No, you gave me that. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't look nice like that though. It was all uh, stuck together. Uh, uh, guys, I, I, I had a cigar box full of old engines uh, got from my cousin who passed on about a year ago. Junior. My cousin Junior. Yeah, yeah. rest his soul. Uh, anyway, he gave me a bunch of old stuff. Look at that antique. Yeah, he gave me some stuck together uh, bound up old glow motors and stuff. I gave them to Rich, and Rich has been soaking them in WD-40 for about two months now. Oh, yeah. Look and at the propeller. That's a tornado propeller. At, they're probably out of business. Um, a 5-4 pitch. Yeah, tornado nylon prop. Wow. And the motor is an OK Cub. OK Cub, man. OK Cub. It's an 049 from before the days of the Cox motors. The, yeah. the, the, the 049 Cub uh, first came out in 1949, and it was produced through the 50s and 60s, and I yeah. think they, they probably stopped production, but I, I was looking them up on the Internet today, and did you know, Rich, you can actually buy parts for OK Cub? I knew and, that. And, and, and the guy that owns the rights to it, he, he will uh, rebuild one for you. If you return it complete to him with nothing missing, uh, They'll, they'll send you back a fresh one for 15 bucks, I think. Oh, they were out of New York. Her they? Herkimer, New York. Herkimer, is, yeah. You, sir, are correct. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the company history. Um, it is indeed from Herkimer, New York. It was yeah. a company called the Herkimer Tool and Model Company. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And what the heck was the guy's name now? I'm trying to think of it. I'll tell you what. I'm just going to cheat and look at my notes. Oh, the year was 1938. Charles Brebeck, Charles Brebeck had a company and he was rebuilding automobile and truck uh, rear ends and, uh, and the, as the story goes one day his son brought home uh, his friend's um, spark ignition model motor that they used to race cars back in those days, uh, tether cars. And, and the kid brought home his friend's motor that was busted up and uh, the old man fixed it and, and he was at the time looking for some extra work for his company and uh, looking for a small product that he could make, small quantities or whatever. And so he designed um, an ignition motor. So that, that was the first uh, OK motor. The, the first one was a... Uh, 1930... What? I think the first one was a 29, but and they quickly came out with a series. There was a 29, a 49, 60, and a 1.2 
twin cylinder. Then, oh, uh, twin. yeah, they made a twin, and those were all ignition motors. Then um, the, the the interest of the modeling public started to turn towards really small airplanes, so he came out with this OK Cub in 1949, and uh, they had a deal with Comet, who had a plastic ready-to-fly U-control airplane. They had the contract, so those all came with uh, OK Cub motors in them, and I, although I think they were the 074 size, they made a bunch of different sizes of, uh, in addition to their original ignition series, they, the two-stroke series included this 049, oh, they had a uh, 074, 099, they made a little 039, wow. a 14, a 19, a 29, a 35, and even um, marine versions with a flywheel and a pull starter and also a little um, O24 diesel version as well as uh, CO2 motors. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. They got to be a, a big player in the model airplane field. In 1952 they were cranking out a thousand engines a day out of their plant in Herkimer, New York. No shit. Yeah. Amazing, huh? It is. So. Wow. So what do you think of this motor, Rich? Well, I've only ran it once or twice when I, when I loosened it up after all those years of sitting and. Yeah, it's been 30, 40 years since that's been run, I'm sure. Yeah. But it flips over nice and you've run it, so. I have run it, yeah. yeah so we're, we're going to see if it'll haul this old uh, windward motor glider up. <laughs> Which, that hasn't been flown in 20, 30 years either. So. Ah, it'll be fun. It's, it's a night of history here, ladies and gentlemen, on the Sonics yeah. 413 channel. Yeah. We'll be back after Richie fuels up. and uh, we're going to be wild. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. Yeah. yeah, go to the refrigerator, get a snack, and yeah. come right back. Beer. All right, gang, it's all put together. Richie's long wire special radio ah. ready to go. This is it, kids. We didn't have to look for anybody using the, the, the frequency clothes pin. We're the only ones here tonight. Yeah. So you think the OK Cub's going to run? I, I read a lot of things about that online today, and a lot of the old timers who remember these motors swear that they weren't that easy to uh, start. They yeah. didn't. They didn't run too good. Uh, they, well, it's hard to choke them. I can see that. Yeah. Well, that, one of the guys said, uh, he, he said, I, my recollection is they used to start pretty good, but you had to choke the hell out of them. Okay, I can see bubbles going through the fuel line. Well, that's plenty then. We're getting something. S sounding wet. Controls all working, free and correct. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah, let me give it a little extra juice. I find sometimes it helps. Now... I noticed the needle valve. I didn't. I only ran it once, I think. But I remember it was open like four turns. Really? Yeah. Could have been just all gummed up. Right. Yeah. Wow, it's got a little crackle to it. Wow. Turn your volume down, guys. Oh, I hear it. Hear it hissing. It sounds flooded. Plenty of fuel. <laughs> we'll try it again. It got better when you held the nose up. It means it was too rich with the nose down. Yeah. Yeah, we'll try it again.
Cub, baby. Go, OK, Cub. All right, the engine just quit for Richie up there. During that motorized portion of the flight, we found out it needs some extra down trim that it didn't have. It was right to the stop, and he still needed more, so he flew the whole engine run with uh, with a little bit of down elevator cranked into it manually. How's she float for you, Rich? All right? Uh, needs a little trim. What do you want? Uh, I don't know. I think I need to put it on the bench to fix this. Okay. I'm getting it now. Yeah, boy. Look at her go, huh? Yeah, it's a floater. One of the all-time great floaters, man. Windward. Windward. Yeah, she does float nicely. Yeah, it's got to be all of 25 or 30 years since that's been in the air, Rich. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. Put it there, buddy. Yeah. Way to go. Ah. Ah. What a flight, huh? Yeah, not too bad. Still a decent flight for a crummy motor run. Yeah. It'll clean up. Yeah. No, it'll clean up. I can tell it's gum just from the sound of it. Yeah, it cleaned up at the end of that motor run. Very yeah. nice. Okay, guys. So there you have it. There you, oh, and I'm on the yellow light. Yellow Time light. All done flying. Time to set her off. So yeah. there you go, guys. It's yeah. the OK Cub 049. Yeah. 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 There's one in your attic somewhere. Yeah, dig it out. <laughs> Send it over. Yeah. Come on, that's me. It looks like a muscle, Mike. Yeah. You want to see low and slow. When are you going to clear the fall? <laughs> no problem. Fly it around for about half an hour until it leans out. Oh, it's a full tank. Full tank? Oh, man. Oh yeah. Around the pole. That a boy. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is what it's like flying a gummed up motor. <laughs> oh, come over here so you can commentate on this too. This is what a gummed up motor sounds like. Yeah. I tried to tweak it the best I can. Yeah. Well, it's like having a throttle on it. When do you get a chance to fly low and slow with this thing? I know, huh? It's nice. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> okay, Cub. Okay, Cub. Well, you know, I was also reading today when the Cox motors came out, they blew these things out of the water. <laughs> Well, it wants to live, doesn't it? It does. Sweet. You're not going to see this anywhere else on YouTube, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nicely done. Well, that's the way I heard one guy describe it too. And on online today, he says, "I used to, I had it in a little radio control plane, and I used to hand launch it and fly it to a powered landing <laughs> every time." <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you again next time.